When turbidity currents flow over the seabed, they can erode it, leaving features that betray the sense of flow of those turbidity currents. And they're preserved as casts on the base of overlying turbidite sandstones. These geologists are looking at the base of a sandstone that was deposited by a turbidity current. And the bed has been tipped up so we can see the underside. These features are gutter casts and flute casts, and they give evidence for the direction over which the causative turbidity current flowed. That information is really useful to us for reconstructing paleogeographies and understanding the organisation of the sedimentary basins that contain these rocks. But if we can use these features to determine the direction of flow, we need to put them back into the orientation they were when they were formed. Let's consider the issue. So let's imagine this is a seabed, and this is the direction that the flute or gutter cast has been carved into it like this. So it's going off in this direction originally. So now let's deposit on top some rocks, which I'll just represent by this notebook here, keeping the direction um, of the pen constant. So let's imagine that there's a tectonic rotation applied. So as we spin these rocks so we can see the undersurface to this orientation here, the pen is now pointing over my right shoulder. So actually, the paleo current we measure in the modern world is not the one that formed originally. And of course, the tectonic rotation that occurs determines the new orientation. So if we'd rotated the bed this way, we can see that our paleo current indicator is now put, inclined down like this. So we need to apply a structural correction, an untilting of the beds back to the horizontal. And we can do this using a stereo net. So let's think about this um, using the stereo net and then we'll apply it to a few examples. So let's go back to our notebook. Here's the uh, modern orientation of our base of our bed with our paleo for indicator and it was originally around like this. So to reconstruct that orientation what we're doing is rotating our bed around the strike of the bed, gradually changing its dip so we're coming back from overturn, so we see the underside, through vertical, back round to the original orientation of the bed with its underside down. And that's the reconstruction we need to apply when using the stereo net. Okay, so let's have a go and do just that. Here's our first example. And uh, in the field, we can measure the bedding. And here it is, it's 08662 and it's overturned. And on that bedding plane, we can see these flute casts and we can measure on these their orientation on the bedding, which we'll measure as a pitch, which is 54 degrees towards the western end of our strike symbol. So that's the orientation of the uh, features that we want to reorient so that the bedding becomes horizontal and the right way up. So let's plot that stuff on the stereo net. North arrow on. Our uh, bed is 08262. In my convention, the dip direction is clockwise from the strike. So let's put the, the strike on. There's 082. Spin it around and I'll just draw on the great circle like that. So now let's put the orientation of those gutters and flutes, which are linear features on the bedding plane. They'll plot as a point on our stereo net. We're plotting them as a pitch. The orientation is 54 from the western end of our um, great circle. So that's north, so this is the western end. Let's count round uh, 54 degrees, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, four degrees. So there is where the uh, flute cast and the gutter cast plot on the bedding plane. So let's just visualize that with our notebook. So there's the steeply dipping plane of the bedding. Here is the orientation of our um, flutes and gutters, which are plunging steeply down into this quadrant down in here. Now, these beds were originally the right way up and horizontal. So in other words, they were originally over here. To get from this position to horizontal, the beds have to rotate through the vertical and then to decreasing dips until they achieve the horizontal. 
So in other words, our bedding is going to sweep across to this side of the steering net to become from what is steeply southerly dipping to steeply and then more gently northerly dipping towards our north arrow on our steering net. So the, let's just plot in the vertical plane that represents when this bed was rotated to vertical. So that would come through here. I'm just, just dotting it so we can see where it goes, like this. So the bed would have rotated from here to there. As a consequence, all the lines on that bedding plane will have also rotated. And our particular one we're interested in is going to track this trajectory here, which is along the small circle traces. So it now achieves that orientation on our vertical bedding plane. Of course, the beds weren't deposited vertical, they were deposited horizontal. So to get back to the original orientation, we keep untilting around here to this position on the side of the steering net. So that is the untilted orientation of our particular features on the bed. So let's just spin this around so we can see what that is, but north back up to the top of the steering net. And we can read this off now as a bearing that the paleo flow indicator was originally uh, oriented on the seabed just after it formed. So let's just count that. That's 270, 280, 290, 300, 310, 314 is the orientation of our paleo flow indicator. Now for these particular features, uh, we're just reporting the flow as an axis. We haven't tried to determine whether it was going this way or that way. In other words, we've untilted to get an orientation of 314, but equally the flow could have been going to 180 degrees the other direction, which is uh, 134, 180 degrees round. We haven't got enough information given the analysis so far to determine uh, between or choose between those two directions. Now, Let's go to another example where indeed we can make further observations. And this example here shows some very steeply uh, dipping turbidite sandstones. They're rather skinny and thin, but they've got these really spectacular flute casts on their undersides. Their original undersides, of course, we're now seeing them uh, rotated uh, to be overturned. So we can see these features on their original bases. Now, flute casts like this are really great for determining paleo flow. The idea being that the turbidity current as it flowed across the seabed uh, scours down um, and then opens up downstream so that the so they're deeper at the upstream end of each flute cast. So therefore we can use these features uh, as a directional indicator as well as an axis indicator of paleo flow. So let's go back to this example and analyze it. This is the bedding orientation, it's overturned, so we're looking onto the undersurface. And on that surface we can see the orientation of the flute casts and they're plunging down like this, which is a pitch of 84 degrees from the southern end of the strike symbol. Now this is the information we're going to plot in the first instance, but we have to realise that the flow direction recorded by those flutes is up the uh, bedding plane as revealed um, in its current orientation, so in this direction. But we're going to plot first of all the bedding and then the uh, flutes as an axis and then worry about the paleo flow direction. Okay, let's put on a north arrow. And this time the strike of the bed is 352 which is there, and it's dipping 80 degrees. Again, with my convention, it's going to be dipping over onto this side. So let's just draw on the great circle that represents that bedding orientation. There we go. And the flutes pitch 84 degrees from the southern end. So this is the southern end, 84 degrees, puts them there. Okay, so now we just need to untilt this around. So let's just visualize it first of all. Uh, here's our steeply dipping bed and here are our flutes dipping down or inclined down like this. And they're going to rotate out over this side. So let's just do that. We've seen how we're doing this. 
the trajectory for the rotation will take it along a small circle out to here to that position there which is 82 degrees okay so that is that rotation I'll just draw on the trajectory it takes it takes this way around to there so therefore we can read that off as a direction as a bearing just rotate that round to north and that direction there uh, is 270 260 252 now let's think a bit about what that actually means because our flutes are showing that the flow was up the bedding plane in other words in the direction the pen is pointing like this so therefore when we rotate our uh, bed with its paleo flow indicator around so that this direction here becomes 252 we can see that's the direction the flows come from the direction it was going to is over this way which is clearly 180 degrees around and that's 072 as a direction so the paleo flow direction was towards 072 uh, in this direction coming from 252 so we can see it's important to keep a track on which direction our flow is heading in. I find it really useful to use a, um, a physical object to keep on top of what I'm actually doing in terms of rotations. Um, and so I get a qualitative idea of where, which vague quadrant we need to be in uh, for the flow direction. And then I use the stereo net essentially uh, to get, add precision to that qualitative approximation. Right, at the risk of over the pudding, let's have a look at a final example. So again, here's the undersurface of a sandstone bed that's been um, rotated so we see it in an overturned state. Um, so there's the bedding orientation and we can see on that bedding plane the orientation of the flow axis defined by the elongate direction of the flutes like this, which is pitching down there to the right towards the northeast uh, at an angle of 12 degrees and again uh, in this particular example the flow revealed by the flutes is in the opposite direction which is back up towards the southwest in its current orientation so we're going to take all this information and plot it on the stereo net and the bedding is 06272 so let's plot that up north on here 062, 72, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 2, 72. Just plot that on. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 72 is there. So let's just draw on the great circle. There we go. And now we put the flute cast on this, which are pitching 12 degrees from the northeastern end of our strike symbol. So let's plot that on, and 12 degrees puts us there. So that's where those flute casts plot. And again, we're going to spin these around. They're gonna go from this orientation round to horizontal, so they're gonna swing round on this trajectory here and pop out there on that bearing. So let's spin that around and see what that is. And that orientation is 10, 20, 30, 40, 050, isn't it? Now, again, let's just look at the orientation of the flutes. So we can see they're deeper developed on the right-hand side of each case uh, and open up to the left. So in other words, this direction here is the, the direction they're coming from that's down the pitch direction. So in other words, they're going up the pitch direction, which means our paleo current indicators are moving the flow towards uh, this quadrant down in here, uh, which is 180 degrees uh, on from 050, which is at 230. So the real paleo flow direction here is towards 230. 
So that's three examples of how to untilt payer currents and restore them to their original orientation, the orientation we want to use if we want to use them to get an idea of the environments and the flow directions at the time of the deposition of those strata. The method is really powerful um, for simple tectonic reconstructions where the deformation involves simple tilting. And in many cases, that's fine. But in some situations, uh, it's not. And the deformation involves more than just rotations around the strike orientation of the bedding. And in the next video, we'll look at how we can take these techniques and modify them to these more complicated situations. Join me then to see how we do that.